Hey everybody, I'm back. Hmm. Kinda thought there'd be more to it than that. got from that. Light hammer? Nobody uses light hammers.
Green shirt plus one. Book of resistance plus one. I can go to her. This cloak of resistance plus two lands a killing blow. They gain immunity to mind affecting conditions for three rounds. I guess I can take that. And I'll give this to him. sure these next few parts are going to be all that exciting. I'm mostly just exploring the map, doing little encounters like that. The skeleton merchant. I remember him from Kingmaker. Good evening to you there. Or is this what days look like in your world wound? Can't really tell, but no matter. Be it day or night, the skeletal salesman always has the best deals you can find anywhere. Ha, ah, here I was planning to attract new customers with the offer of a free potion of fox's cunning, but I can see you don't need one. I could use a free potion. Here, please take it and enjoy. Just don't use it to outfox some poor salesman. What do you sell? Oh, I have the widest choice of merchandise. Right now I've got a fine selection of ma magicianal, mysterical spell thingies. Everything a wizard could want. By the way, could you advise me what, I, what would sell best in these parts now? I have a choice of exotic wares from faraway lands, then there's the personal protection equipment, and a whole arsenal for a hunter. I think I'd be interested in seeing the exotic wares from faraway lands. Noted, seek me out on the roads with new goods to buy. Show me your wares. Here, take a good look. Pick anything you like, buy all of it. Ooh, Bracers of Armor plus four. Aramaki plus two life. Yeah, it's still not as good as that. Shot Quarterstaff. Uh, natural Armor plus two. Cloak of Resistance plus three. Scroll of Controlled Fireball. Lesser Bolster Meta Magic Rod. This rod grants its wielder the ability to make up to three spells per 
They cast per day bolstered as though using the bolster spell feat. Lesser rods can be used with spells of third level, third level or lower. Bolster spell spell now deals two more damage per die rolled to all its targets. Additionally, all enemies in five feet of the spell targets are dealt two damage per die rolled of the original spell. The spell no longer applies precision damage. Sell some of this stuff. Yeah, I don't think anyone in my party is gonna have any real use. Well, maybe. Let's see, that gives five AC. I got that mainly for the plus two bonus on concentration checks. Four AC. Yeah, that's one less. Maybe the DR it grants is worth it. Just sell that. And that. No bards. Uh, not as much as I thought I'd get. Oh, that's because I'm buying that. Tell me about yourself. I'm a simple man. I keep no secrets. You can see right through me. What would you like to know? How did you become who or what you are? Oh, now there's a story and a half. Listen well and don't repeat my mistakes or you won't be able to live with yourself. Get it? Alright, moving on. Once I was just like you, exploring all sorts of ruins and filling my pockets with riches until I stumbled into a Dracolich's lair. That's one scary beast, let me tell you. A lich and a dragon. He would have eaten me whole had I not suggested a deal. I would sell off all the blades and armor left by previous adventurers. Surely he didn't have much use for all that equipment, but he could earn a tidy sum of gold. Surprisingly, he agreed. But that didn't save my life. Instead, he just turned me into a walking pile of bones. And what do you know, that was just the beginning of my troubles. For a long time I wandered the River Kingdoms, peddling wares until I met one devious scoundrel. At first glance he looked decent enough, decked out in armor, clearly a paladin. He asked me where my master's lair was. Obviously he wasn't averse to take such an interest, but the Draco Lich was no slouch. 
He put an enchantment on me so I couldn't even remember the lair's location. However, this knight turned out to be quite the wizard too. I'm no expert in magic, but basically he offered to perform a ritual that would reveal the location of my master's lair. Then he and his pals would kill the Draco Lich and give me my freedom. Plus half the horde. Sounds like a sweet deal, huh? So I agreed, like a fool. He showed me the contract and it seemed alright to me, so I just signed it right then and there. We conducted the ritual and the knight found out where my master was hiding by looking at some astral tracks or whatnot. Long story short, they killed the Draco Lich. The knight offered me my half of the treasure as promised, and then, as per the terms of our contract, he demanded payment for the ritual's components for my freedom, and then there were taxes, excise fees, and fines. Before I knew it, I had to give him all of my loot and still couldn't even cover my debt. And so he offered me a way to repay it by working as before, or his master this time. Thus I'm still traveling, peddling, and all that until I earn every last coin that I owe him. And you know what? To pay off that kind of sum, I'm pretty sure I'll have to keep working for him until Grotus brings the end times. Now that's a story, isn't it? Someday I might even write a tragic play about myself. I'll call it Undeath of a Salesman. As for the moral, the moral of my story is this. Watch what you sign. That lesson is free. For the rest of what's in this fine card, you'll have to pay in gold. Who is your new master? Did I tell you the knight looked like a paladin? Well, he wasn't anything of the sort. On the contrary, he was a servant of Mammon, the Archdevil of Avarice. That's the one he sold me to, guts and all. Although by then I had no I had no guts, really. Now, at least if somebody asks me where my master's lair is, I can honestly say Erebus, the third layer of hell, palace of the royal treasurer, entrance by appointment only. Do you want me to try and free you from this curse? No thanks. Been there, done that. Only made things worse. I've had enough hell. I'll make do. You trade with everyone, crusaders and demon worshippers alike? You bet. What do I care about which side of yours is winning anyway? Both are buying my wares, business is booming, everybody needs a weapon and a good set of armor. You sell one thing, the next day they bring it back all ragged and full of holes, looking for a replacement. Sure, this war will probably end one day. Maybe the Crusaders will finally patch up that abyssal hole, or maybe this whole region will fall through it. That's when I'll pack up and go elsewhere. Galarian is a big place. I can always find new customers. Thank you for your answers. You are very welcome. Talking is easier than dragging a cart. I can wag my tongue all day for free, even though I don't have one. I don't need anything right now. Eh, what can you do? There's a war raging here, so I'll have no shortage of customers. If you don't buy anything, then your enemies will. mercenary serving Horgus Gwyrm has reached the troops with a chest full of gold coins and a message from Sir Horgus to, squor to score more victories. not really a reason to having a whole army of just 15 shield bearers.
Oh, that thing. Wrong mongrel. Cover me, all right. Those things are fucking ridiculous. Look at that, they get a 24 attack bonus. Composite longbow. Yeah, I think this will actually be better than that. be a lot of places that just have nothing.
I feel like these battles mainly just come down to who can be the best damage sponge. A squad of crusaders was caught in a sudden storm from the west. It lasted only a few minutes, but the unnatural lightning made up of electricity, flames, acid, and ice left several soldiers dead. The ease with which the forces of nature brutally claimed the lives of their comrades has demoralized the crusaders. The outpost at Villareth Ford, which straddles the West Selen Crossing and is of strategic importance, has been taken. The cultists are destroyed, and the commander's army is able to operate on both sides of the river. Zombies. Eat those things.
A corpse in a tattered scout's cape bearing the emblem of the crusade was leading the undead squad. He battled on until he ran out of bolts and desperately tried to conceal his crossbow with his own body even when the soldiers were hacking off his limbs. Crossbow of Judgment This plus two every crossbow has a critical range reduced to 20. Whenever it threatens a critical hit against an evil or chaotic creature, creature it is automatically confirmed. I'll give it a try. This was a mistake. Commander, we got a suspicious lad on the lo on the road. It says he's an ally and he's desperate to talk to you. Who knows who he really is? The young man before you is trembling from his wounds and exhaustion. His boots are in tatters as if he had any weapon and if he had any weapons or armor, he shed them along the way. His clothes are torn and his hair is wet like he recently swam across a river. Blood oozes from the wounds on his chest and shoulders, and his skin is cracked and inflamed from the acrid water of the world wound. Commander, my squad ambushed beyond the river. Help! Give our guest some water and something for his wounds. The knight's wounds heal with the help of a magic potion. Taking a gulp of water, he catches his breath. Snaps to attention and begins again. Yeker Ankel, Hell Knight of the Order of the Godclaw, under the command of Paralictor Regald Terenge. Our squad is under attack by demons far surpassing our number. Without your assistance, we are lost. Hell Knights. They've supported the Crusaders more than once in our battle against the demons. Despite their questionable reputation, we cannot abandon our allies in trouble. If they really. If they really are our allies, then of course, it's just... I kinda think this isn't a knight at all. A real Hell Knight would be skinned alive for losing his infamous black armor. What we see here is a stranger without rank or insignia who wants us to march to God knows where. Kinda smells like a trap to me. Iker, who is attacking you, and why can't you handle them on your own? Large creatures that attack from the air. Some are fighters, others are, at a guess, clerics with dangerous divine magic. 
They look like stone come to life. I am almost certain they are gargoyles. They fell upon us from the sky while we were setting up camp and at our most vulnerable, and they caught our forces at partial strength. The Paralictor has dispatched some of our troops as scouting teams. The flying beasts didn't fight us, they just fell on us from the sky, grabbed our fighters, and either took them somewhere or th threw them to their deaths. We were unprepared for that. Where is your squad now? Not far from here, beyond the river. It's not far for a single fighter who abandoned his armor and weapons, but we can't get across the river so easily. We'll have to take a detour. Even if we can save anyone, it will seriously delay our offensive on Dresden, and will give the enemy a chance to prepare. What do my companions think? Hell knights. With allies like them, we've no need for enemies. If it suited them, they'd abandon us to the demons without a second thought. But we're not like them, are we? We have to save them. Looks like a trap to me. But even if he isn't lying, Dresden is our goal. If our, if our offensive is delayed, we won't get another chance to retake the city. The Hell Knights are heartless executioners. Saving people from the claws of demons is a good cause in itself, but these people are doing everything they can to become just like the devils. Jelen, forgive me, but I fear we should leave the Hell Knights to their fate and continue our offensive on Dresden. Do you recall Prelate Hulrun? Well, picture an entire army of soldiers just like him. Do we need allies like that? If they die, I shan't shed a tear. We should help them, but only if they join our forces in return. We could use some fresh blood. Hell Knights? No, not for all the gold in the world. Don't you know what kind of people they are? One minute you're just going about your business, the next you're locked in the stocks, and there's a butcher in black armor standing in front of you. I don't know who these knights are, but if there are people suffering out there, then of course we have to help. It's what we came here to do, isn't it? Huh? What? This question has no scientific significance. What's interesting is how the water in the river poisoned by the world wound will affect this boy. With your permission, I'd like to examine him, or his corpse, in a few days' time. We'll take the risk to try and help them. Thank you, Commander. Our forces are here. The situation is critical. Please send your reinforcements as soon as possible. I will go ahead and meet you there. I guess that can go in the chest. And this. While I'm here, though. Yeah, I'm just gonna give him a chain shirt. Oh, wait. That weighs him down too much, though. Uh. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody else who even wears armor. Beautiful. Hey, little one. They say you can do magic. Can you heal me? Of course. Thank you, that's so much better. How old are you? You're only a child. I have a granddaughter at home just like you. Oh, little girl, how did you end up here? What are you doing here in the thick of it with us? I'm just like you. I came to the thick so that the thick wouldn't come to the other kids, like your granddaughter. Well, I'll be. So little and yet more courage than some officers. Talking to you takes a load off my mind. I reckon it's not just my arm you healed. Hi. Do they often come to you for help like this? Demons keep hurting them, I keep healing them. But you know, it's surprising. So many soldiers come to me. They say I bring them comfort, that I give them strength. 
But I don't do anything like that at all. I only talk to them nicely. I'm just a feather-brained little girl. What if something I say is wrong? Maybe I should keep quiet. But I can tell that my words make them feel better. I guess I'm confused. Don't second guess yourself. You're helping all of us. Soldiers, our companions, and me. You think so? I think I'm just wandering around silly, saying silly things. Alright, it must be true if you say so. You've earned the title of commander. Canabris still stands thanks to you. But you'll have to be doubly on your guard. Your eminence places a target on your back, and there are assassins about. Killing a high-ranking crusader would bring a demon far more prestige than killing a f common soldier. Not long ago, I stymied a few of the spinner of nightmares attempts on the lives of influential crusaders, so I know what I'm talking about. Who was the elf that was talking to you? She didn't introduce herself, but she was greatly interested in the volunteers that had joined the army. She thought I might know the elf she was looking for from my mercenary contacts, but I couldn't tell you any more than that, she never shared his name. I guess I'll stick with this party. the darkness.
the wrong mongrel. Survive me.
Might be trap. Might be treasure. Shit. Another one of those things. Pretty good, aren't I? Me, all right. It's all your fault. This condition is... I dedicate my body to science. <sighs> Me. This is my kind of work. We will 
win this war. It's just not my lucky day. Oh. What's this? Headband of vast intelligence. Cloak of cleansing. This cloak of resistance plus two additionally grants the wearer plus two bonus on saving throws against compulsion and disease effects. I'll give that to her. And headband of vast intelligence. I think she's the most obvious one to give it to. Hopefully that's all I have to deal with here. No, of course there's more. Is this thing? You won't survive me. No time for debates. What? That was it? Oh, never mind. I guess there's more.
endure this! this I am the answer, but what is the question? The absence of an answer is an answer, too. Hey! Wait, where are you going? Spontaneous dematerialization is unscientific! Following her example, you put your hand on the statue, and the world around you ceases to exist. You are a lone grain of sand floating in the emptiness of the unknown. Your path has no beginning and no end. You are tiny and insignificant in comparison with the cosmos that surrounds you. But then something changes. The emptiness takes notice of you. It stares at you, measures and assesses you. And then a question comes, as simple and as deep as the emptiness itself. Who are you? I am Reynard. The name you uttered, that seemed so powerful and proud, rings through the emptiness. Then the silence comes, bleak and oppressive. The emptiness still awaits your answer. I am... Do you want to say your name? But what is it? Just a set of sounds you use to associate with yourself. You are... Reynard? Who decided this is who you are? Your parents? Yourself? Someone else? A name is just a label you take voluntarily. What happens if you tear this label off? What hides behind the name Reynard? Behold the truth. Open yourself to knowledge. Reveal yourself. Nenio, you hear me? You voice from nowhere or whatever you are. What's going on here, Nenio? Is that you? Well, I'll be a fox. You are a kitsune, kitsune. It appears your observation is correct. I am a kitsune. If my hypothesis is correct. And the probability of that is close to 100%. I have always been a kitsune, but at some point I decided to forget that piece of knowledge. Following this line of reasoning, it would seem the fact of my membership of a certain race just doesn't seem relevant to me. Also, there is a more important question. Why did my true identity reveal itself in this precise moment? And nothing bothered you at all? You never wanted to shift your shape? You never felt uncomfortable without a tail you can comfortably wrap around you as you go to sleep in the evening? How could you ever forget that you're one of us? This question is irrelevant in the current situation. If you wish, you can ask me about it later. If you believe that I've been keeping my true identity a secret on purpose, you are mistaken. I have no interest in your causes, your battles, or your secrets, if you have any. 
All I need from you is your assistance with my experiments. And with this. I have no words. Can I just stand here silently and look like I'm thinking something smart? What was that? I found myself in emptiness and a voice asked me a question. I suppose it was a trap that yanked our minds out of our plane and temporarily transferred us to another one. I wish I knew which plane. By the way, did you know that the most efficient way to disarm a corridor's worth of magical traps is with the help of a scientist who has been told that the formula for an elixir of the ancient races lies hidden at the end of said booby-trapped corridor? <sighs> Whose voice do you think it was? I haven't the slightest idea, but it is most definitely an extremely wise entity. Besides, the entity displayed no aggressive tendencies, which gives us hope that it can be reasoned with. So, what do you think about that? The voice in the emptiness asked me, and judging by your reaction, you too, who I am. And merely stating my name failed to satisfy it. The trap then forced me to assume my true form, which I had completely forgotten about. Hmm. I suppose... I suppose this trap wasn't a trap, per se. It rather was a closed portal leading to some hidden place that can easily unveil secrets and reveal the truth. The one who spoke to us seemed to solve me like a riddle, in an instant, just by looking at me. I... I would like to meet this entity. Can you imagine which secrets it can unravel? I want to speak to it, and you, my follower, must help me. But how can you get there? If there is a door, there must be a way to open it. If there is a lock, there must be a key to it. Hmm. There is an inscription here, right on the statue. I am the void and the emptiness. I am the starting point. I am infinite. Tear my mask off and let it fall at my feet. <clears throat> I don't understand this at all. How thrilling! Sounds like a riddle. It does. It really does. I love riddles and puzzles. How do we solve it? Each of them is inscribed with a riddle, and each demands that something be placed at its feet. I guess we need some items that represent the answers to these riddles. But don't ask me where we should look for them. Maybe we should ask one of these geysers. I don't think they can help us. Looks like all they can do is mumble their mantra about questions and answers. Why are you so sure that the unknown entity behind the mysterious portal would even want to talk to us? I'm not sure at all. But we must try, we simply must. Getting there and talking with this entity will be the greatest of my experiments, no exaggeration. The portal that leads to the unknown could be dangerous. The world wound is dangerous, walking under a hanging icicle is dangerous, even choking on a chunk of badly chewed food can lead to a fatal outcome after all. Living is dangerous, but what is danger compared to knowledge? Looks like there's nothing more we can do here now. <sighs> with deepest regret, I have to admit that you are right. It's highly unlikely that we'll be able to solve this riddle right here and now. We'll have to temporarily withdraw so we can return when we're armed and ready. Is that sand or is that snow? I am the void and the emptiness. I am the starting point. I am infinite. Tear my mask off and let it fall at my feet. And this one. I am the impetus to act. I am a reason for torture and a cause for insomnia. Tear my mask off and let it fall at my feet. I am the unknown. I scare cowards but reveal my secrets to the brave. I am the end of the road, I am superiority, I am loneliness.
Can't hide from me. So what does a paladin use charisma for? Measures of persuasion and use magic device skill checks. Channel energy DCs for clerics and paladins attempting to harm undead foes. Mm -mm. I think I'll give that to Socio. He has more channels anyway. was never good at stealth, but I'll try. Here comes trouble! <laughs> Stab you or zap you? Why not both?
Are you still here? <laughs> hide under the ground if you came up to the surface would the good people really turn you away why do you live on the street if you entered a wealthy home would the good people not allow you to stay there again.
After the battle, one of the soldiers noticed a half-effaced inscription on a nearby stone. What remained of the engraving led the, led the crusaders to a secluded cave where they found a stash of miscellaneous relics that some selflessly devoted clerics had managed to rescue from fallen Dresden. They also discovered flasks of sanctified oil and boxes of reagents for rituals and sacred masses. It would appear the brave priests hid their sacred artifacts in one final attempt to save them from demonic threat. here to get rid of this corruption. Tiefling friends tease you about your shadow? I remember how upset you used to get when you were little. Stop acting like we know each other. Only a pathetic idiot would be friends with a crazy beggar. You got it? That ain't me. Here we go.
to you. Making full attack ace, the creature may make one extra attack with its main weapon. Attack is made using the creature's full base attack bonus. Plus us say about fires. Appropriate to the situation, this effect is not cumulative with similar effects, such as that provided by a speed weapon, nor does it actually grant an extra action, so you can't use it to cast a second spell, or otherwise take an extra action in the round. A hasted creature gains a plus one bonus on attack rolls, and a plus one dodge bonus to ace, G, and reflex saves. Any condition that makes you lose your dexterity bonus to armor class, if any, also makes you lose dodge bonus. A hasted creature's speed increases by 30 feet to a maximum of twice the subject's normal speed. This increase counts as an enhancement bonus. Multiple haste effects don't stack. Haste dispels slow. So there's... Oh, maybe there is a reason to describe it at a higher level. It lasts longer then. Yeah, maybe I can take them now. go. After driving away a swarm of demonic flies, the Crusaders discovered the remains of an unfortunate group of Mandevian knights. Their leader had a baldric with an emblem recognized by one of the soldiers. It was the crest of the infamous fallen knight, Malander Linz. Breastplate plus two. Nah, no, that's not better than the half plate of vigor. And nobody else uses armor. Well, maybe Socio can use that. Anyway, this thing. Malander Linz was one of the most notable and controversial figures of the Third Crusade. The debate still rages whether his valiant feats of strength and his willingness to make sacrifices in the name of the Crusade balance out the unholy crime that was exposed after a purge by the Inquisition. It was revealed that Malander Linz had been practicing the forbidden dark arts of magic, turning this knowledge against the demons. Shortly after the discovery, Linz decided to let the debate about his dubious methods rage on without him, and secretly left Canabras in the dead of night alongside a group of like-minded deserters. Thereafter, they waged their own war against the demons, tracking down and destroying small enemy groups, but ultimately all the members of Malander Linz's squad fell in battle. 
Scouts discovered evidence that with each passing year, Linz had been descending ever deeper into his private abyss of the dark arts. He would have sacrificed everything for victory, but the question still remains whether he was a hero or a traitor. Can you do anything with that? I'm not sure you can. Oh, I leveled up again. I think now is a good place to stop for now. So thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you all some other time.